Introduction to Power Flow Analysis, Part One: The Theory. In this and the following video, we will talk about power flow analysis. It is one of the most important and fundamental area of science when we want to examine whether a power system can be operated in a safe and stable manner. But first, we need to know what it is, why it is important, and what it usually can or cannot do. Then. We will dig into the physics and math of the theory behind. In the later videos, we will then discuss method to actually conduct a power flow analysis. So, what is power flow analysis? Basically, it is a method to quantify how much power flow or current is being transmitted on the power lines, and also. What the voltage is at each node of the power system. These are obviously very important parameters we want to either monitor in real time or model for a scenario in the future, because we do not want the power lines or power electronics to break down due to overloading or under and over voltage. Since these parameters, power flow, current, and voltage. Are perhaps the most important physical parameters in any power system. Power analysis is the fundamental tool for any safety and stability tests in both monetary and modeling. However, you probably notice that something is missing. Grid frequency was not mentioned here. This is because we usually assume the power system is at a fixed stationary point when conducting powerful analysis. So grid frequency does not change at all under this assumption, and it is thus a static analysis of a time slot of the power system. As we will learn in the later videos, we may be able to find the sensitivities of the system parameters, the voltage and the power flow, with each other. So we can get a view of how easy or difficult for the system to deviate from a desired fixed stationary point. But that is still not a dynamic analysis of the power system, and we cannot model contingencies such as a sudden failure of a conventional power plant with this type of static analysis. It is of course possible to model the evolution of power contingency with a dynamic model, but that will be too much for our introduction video. Surprisingly, the physics behind power flow analysis is quite straightforward. We all have done a simplified version of it in the middle school or high school. Let us imagine a battery connected with a load. The voltage supply from the battery is V, and the resistance of the load is R. Now, as any middle school physics textbook will tell you, the current following around the line obeys Ohm's law. Which is I equals to V divided by R, and the power supplied from the battery to the load obeys the electric power law, P equals to V multiplied by I. Now, what happens when another load is added in the circuit, but we only know its power consumption P and not its resistance? Well, we can still calculate the voltage difference between the second load. It is V prime. Equals to V minus I R, but we also know from the electric power law that V prime equals to P divided by I, so we should have V equals to P divided by I plus I R. So the current of the circuit I is a solution to the quadratic equation R I square minus V I plus P equals to zero. Which has solutions I equals to V divided by 2R times 1 plus minus square root of 1 minus 4RP divided by V square, and therefore V prime equals to 2RP divided by V divided by 1 plus minus square root of 1 minus 4RP divided by V square. This is actually the simplest possible case in power flow analysis which we can get, but it already shows us some important concepts for later on. The most important of all is that there is a fundamental limit on the power consumption of the load coming out of the math. 
namely, if p is greater than v squared divided by 4r, then there will be a negative value in the square root bracket, so there will be no physically meaningful solution for v prime. The system breaks down, and we call this situation voltage collapse. If p happens to be exactly equal to v squared divided by 4r, we have exactly one solution, v prime equals to 2rp divided by v. We sometimes call this point the nose of the solution curve. Draw the possible solutions v prime as a function of p, and you can see why it is being called that way. Although, more formally, we should call it the bifurcation point. On the graph, we can also see what happens if p is lesser than v squared divided by 4r. We will have two solutions. Taking the minus sign in the bracket, we will get a high voltage solution. While taking the plus sign in the bracket, we will get a low voltage solution. The set of high voltage solutions is sometimes called the high voltage branch, and the set of low voltage solutions, the low voltage branch. As seen clearly on the graph, the two branches meet at the bifurcation point. Both solutions are physically possible, but they have different stability properties. On the graph, we can see that the high voltage solution always has a negative slope with respect to p, while the low voltage solution always has a positive slope with respect to p. So a load controller which has a negative feedback loop for controlling p according to the deviations of v prime will only work for the high voltage solution, and the system will therefore be unstable when it is at the low voltage branch of the solution. In reality, we prefer the high voltage solution because it has less power losses on the line. Okay, once we know the basic physics, we are now ready to perform powerful analysis in a complex alternative current grid. First, it's AC now, so we will need to deal with complex numbers. This means that Voltage, current, resistance, and power flow are all complex numbers now. In the AC world, Ohm law is still the same, but we usually call the complex resistance impedance and write it as Z, so V equals to Zi, whereas we write the complex power as S, and the power equation becomes S equals to V I star, where I star means the conjugate of the current. We usually have three phases in an AC power system, but in our analysis, we will restrict ourselves to per phase analysis, which is an oversimplification if we want to do dynamic analysis, since imbalance within the three phases might occur during the contingency. But that is not what a static analysis can cover anyway. Secondly, we want to deal with grids that have a more complex topology than the series circuit we have just shown earlier. Obviously, we need a more systematic approach to attack such a compact grid, rather than using Ohm's law one circuit at a time. To systematically analyze a complex grid, we need another law, the Kirchhoff's current law. What it states is that for every node on the grid, the sum of the current coming into the node is equal to the sum of the current coming out. So suppose we have a grid with n lines and n nodes. We define a n by n incident matrix n as the following. The entry nij is 1 when the starting point of line number i is node number j, minus 1 when the ending point of line number i is node number j, and 0 if otherwise. The direction must be assigned for every line, but it can be arbitrarily chosen. For example, we can represent the topology of this grid as the incident metric shown, and we can swap the minus 1 and 1 for any pair of starting and ending points of the lines. Then, according to the Kirchhoff's current law, we need to have I0 transpose plus I transpose n equals to 0, where I is the current on each line and I0 is the current coming in or going out from the consistent grid at each node. 
Ohm's law can also be written in the compact form if we define a n by n admittance metric y. Admittance is basically the inverse of the impedance z, and in most practical cases, the admittance metric will be a diagonal metric where the diagonal terms indicate the admittance of each line. We can write Ohm's law as i equals to y n v, where v is the voltage at each node. Note that only on the nodes can there be voltage values assigned. So if there is a battery or any other types of voltage source on the line, we need to change it into an equivalent current source with thevenin norton law. Combining the compact forms of Kirchhoff current law and Ohm's law, we get n transpose y n v equals to minus i0 or y eq v equals to i eq. This is a linear system of equations of v, and we should be able to solve it if we are given sufficient information. For example, if the voltage of one of the nodes is known. Intuitively, this means that we can only calculate the relative voltage difference of each node, but not the actual voltage value, since the reference voltage can be arbitrarily chosen as long as the relative voltage differences among the nodes remain the same. As in our previous single load example, it is usually more common that power consumption on each node are known, and we need to determine the voltage at each node accordingly. We can therefore write the electric power law of each node in the compact form. S equals to V entrywise dot IEQ star equals to V entrywise dot YEQ star V star, where S is the complex power consumption or injection at each node. This is the power flow equation which we will be working with in the later video.